So friends, Republican Representative Jim Jordan is taking his clown show on the road, heading up to New York City to hold hearings in his ongoing attempts to interfere in New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg's prosecution of defendant Donald Trump. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, Jim Jordan is folding up his circus tent, packing up his clown car and heading to the Big Apple to perform one ugly obstructionist circus act. Here's the new reporting from USA Today. Headline, Jim Jordan, House GOP, ramp up criticism of Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, take fight to New York City. I hate to quibble with the author of this headline, but I would change one word. I would say they're taking their obstruction to New York City. That article begins, House Republicans are continuing their attack on Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, this time taking the fight to Bragg's home turf in New York City. The House Judiciary Committee, led by GOP Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio, said it will be holding a hearing April 17th in New York City titled Victims of Violent Crime in Manhattan. Focusing on crime in the city and accusing Bragg of fostering a dangerous community for New York City residents. The hearing will examine how Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's pro-crime anti-victim policies have led to an increase in violent crime and a dangerous community for New York City residents, Jim Jordan's committee said in a statement. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office hit back and called the hearing what it is, a political stunt. Don't be fooled. The House GOP is coming to the safest big city in America for a political stunt. This hearing won't engage in actual efforts to increase public safety, such as supporting national gun legislation and shutting down the iron pipeline, a spokesperson said in a statement on Twitter Monday. Jim Jordan's clownish antics would make bozo blush. So what's really going on here? Well, in a new piece in The Bulwark, former federal prosecutor Dennis Aftergut nails it regarding Jim Jordan's true objectives. I want to highlight just a a few passages from Dennis's new piece. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will put a link to the article in the description of this video. Headline, Jim Jordan takes his clown show on the road. There goes Jim Jordan, the MAGA chairman of the House Judiciary Committee and its weaponization of government subcommittee, driving his clown car to a new town. Since February, Jordan has hosted hearings that have flopped harder than a distracted trapeze artist. Nice touch, Dennis. Now, Jordan has announced that he's packing up the tent and hitting the road. Next week, the committee will be taking a taxpayer-funded field trip to New York. So, yes, we will be paying for Jim Jordan's pathetic circus. He'll be taking a taxpayer-funded field trip to New York. Why New York? Well, to go after Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, whom Donald Trump, in his patented racist style, has called an animal, and about whom Trump has screeched that the Democrats have totally weaponized law enforcement in our country to interfere with our already under siege elections. As for Jordan parading his tired act onto the Great White Way, that would be Broadway. Alvin Bragg's office pointedly said yesterday that it welcomes public safety conversations. We have them every day with our local, state, and federal law enforcement partners. What's more, Bragg, in response to a week of Republican attacks claiming that he was ignoring real crime because he was too distracted prosecuting Trump, highlighted new NYPD crime data showing that during his, Bragg's, 
first year in office. Murders are down 14 percent, shootings are down 17 percent, burglaries are down 21 percent, and robberies are down 8 percent. Then, like a skilled politician, Bragg pointed out that New York's murder rate was among the lowest among major cities in the country, nearly three times lower than that of Columbus, Ohio, which sits just outside Jordan's own district. But Bragg was not about to leave the door wide open to Jordan's attempt to intrude on his ongoing investigation by subpoenaing Mark Pomerantz, a former Bragg deputy, for an April 20 deposition. On Tuesday, Bragg filed a lawsuit in federal court to stop that from happening. To push the narrative that Bragg should be prosecuting crimes other than those committed by Donald Trump, Jordan said that his committee will hear in New York from victims of Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's policies. In other words, let's exploit a few victims of crime for political gain. America, prepare for Jordan's shameless partisan attacks on the discretion that all prosecutors deploy in deciding which crimes they can prove and which crimes they can't. You know, friends, as a former career prosecutor who worked with countless victims, I find this particularly repugnant. Jim Jordan using victims as props for political gain. And what of this lawsuit that Alvin Bragg just filed to stop Jim Jordan from obstructing defendant Donald Trump's prosecution? Well, it looks like the federal judge that drew this assignment that will now be responsible for this litigation is Mary K. Viscochil. Apologies to the judge if I'm mispronouncing her last name. I did some quick research on Judge Viscochil, and what I learned prompted me to post this. So the judge who drew the Bragg versus Jordan case, Judge Mary K. Viscochil, is a Trump appointee who worked for 33 years in general commercial litigation in New York City, and whose one notable case appears to be dismissing a defamation suit brought by Karen McDougal against Tucker Carlson. And what did that lawsuit involve? Brought by Karen McDougal for defamation against Tucker Carlson that was dismissed by Judge Viscochil? On December 5th, 2019, Karen McDougal, an American model and one-time Playboy magazine playmate, who had an affair with Trump in 2006 to 2007, filed a defamation lawsuit against the television network Fox News. According to the suit, network anchor Tucker Carlson defamed McDougal by saying that she had personally extorted Trump for the hush money she received in 2016, a claim she denied. On September 24th, 2020, Viscochil dismissed the defamation lawsuit, writing that the statements are rhetorical hyperbole, an opinion commentary intended to frame a political debate, and as such, are not actionable as defamation. The judge added that the general tenor of the show should then inform a viewer that Carlson is not stating actual facts about the topics he discusses and is instead engaging in exaggeration and non-literal commentary. And you may recall this case, the McDougal defamation case against Tucker Carlson, ended up inspiring headlines like this from NPR. You literally can't believe facts Tucker Carlson tells you so say Fox's lawyers. Well, I'm sorry, Judge Viscochil may think that Tucker Carlson's lies, excuse me, his exaggerations and non-literal commentary are not worthy of belief. Do you think the Fox viewers believe him? 
Do you think Karen McDougal was defamed, suffered as a result of these exaggerations and non-literal claims about her? Well, we will keep an eye on the litigation in the case of Bragg versus Jordan to see how Judge Visco Cheel handles the case. Hopefully she gets it right because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.